everyone, in this lecture, we're gonna be talking about the two sample Z test. Now the two sample Z test is almost identical to the two sample T test, except the fact that it makes assumptions that are false. And therefore, don't use it, ever. It's a terrible test. If you have the choice between a Z test and a T test, the answer is every time, choose the T test. But that being said, I should teach you how to use the Z-test because most students in a statistics class will need to know how to do this um, on a test. So if you go to stat and you go you scroll over to the menu for tests, if you go to number three, it says two sample Z-test. You click on that and you're going to see every single thing being exactly the same as it is a two sample T-test, which we covered in the last couple lectures except the fact that you're gonna see sigma one and sigma two, which are your population standard deviations. Now, this should give you a red flag because you shouldn't know the population standard deviation because if you did know the population standard deviation, then by logic, you should know the population averages. And if you know the population averages, then there's no need to know whether or not the two averages are different from each other because you just subtract the two. Like, this is the most useless test I've ever seen because in order to conduct this test, you need information that you would never be able to solve that you're trying to find using the test. It's just completely meaningless. So for that reason, I never talk about the Z-test. It's just a waste of time. But it is important to know how to calculate it because most statistics classes still involve the Z-test in, uh, in their exams, in their homework. So it's important to understand how to do that. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next lecture.